time I'm presenting this topic. The first time, five people showed up and I was one of them. And the second time, four people showed up and I was one of them. So I was like, oh my God, let's hope more people show up. But this, uh, this is a topic that's very, very close to my heart. And uh, I just, I hope to give you, convey the same enthusiasm that I have for it because it's, uh, it's what made me who I am today. Basically, um, this is step four in my book. It's called, uh, step four is write it down. And every single thing that I've done in my life, I probably record it in some form or another uh, because I've journaled since I was 21. And so the first part of my life was just a lot of complaints, a lot of gripes, a lot of heartache that just got poured out on, into paper. And then the second part of my life, I started to recognize that I was getting, literally being downloaded with messages from God. So I had wonderful, wonderful stories to tell and constantly, um, and but it wasn't stories so much as bits of advice that kept coming through me. And it helped me become um, more resilient. It helped me understand what was happening. And the um, I'd like to, I just very, very quickly capsulized what I learned in the beginning, and that's what's on your first page. And so before we go into our exercise of dream analysis, I'd like to kind of just go over um, what we had, um, what was, you know, so, Im what was so important to me. <clears throat> the first thing on my list was that I was able to connect to the divine within. And this came because I've heard voices my entire life, well, since I was eight, but I really didn't know it was spirit talking to me. I just thought I was smart. And when I started to recognize that, no, the information isn't coming from me, it's coming through me, that's when I recognized that there was a, a higher power working in my life. And because I was able to connect to that higher power, I was then able to get through horrendously traumatic incidences that happened to me by always listening to the advice that was coming through me. And the advice, um, in, in some cases, was uh, made my life, under, at least put it this way, understandable. If not acceptable, at least I understood it. And then when I became very, very serious about my spiritual path and prayed to God to send me a teacher, that's when he sent me Wanda, who I feel is the, one of the greatest gifts the universe has ever gifted me with. And uh, so I really uh, feel very, very blessed to have been with Wanda virtually from the moment she went public. Uh, in fact, even before she went public. And uh, at the end of today, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, ceremony for her because August 10th was her birthday. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> we're going to honor her with uh, a, a little birthday cake that Ojeda so graciously brought. The, there was a time when the only thing that I wanted in my life was to be known for how ambitious I was. And I figured if people just understood that how hard I worked and how ambitious I was, that that was enough, that that, 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 that kind of defined me. And there was, I can remember, my daughter was four, my son was one. I'm at a beach, I'm in a condo, and I've had probably the third fight with my husband in, one, in the same day. And 
I walked out just feeling so low, so depressed, so kind of anguished, and couldn't understand what was wrong with me, why I could never seem to find happiness, because no matter how hard I tried, it eluded me. So I sat down on, the, I left them in the condo, and I needed to get away from that energy. Totally left them there, sat down, and started writing on a, the only piece of paper that I could find, which was a bank envelope that had scribbling on one side. Turned it over, it, it was totally blank. And so I, re, I, I, I basically said to myself, what is it going to take to make me happy? And I bulleted 25 points. And I didn't look at the 25 points till the next day. And when I read them off to myself the next day, I realized that 23 of them were spiritual. So that really kind of set me on my heels. It, it should have been purely evident to me, you know, where my path was trying to, to lead me, but it didn't. I, I didn't feel like I could totally disrupt my life from what I was doing at the time, which was uh, full-time real estate, and to, to do something that I felt was the calling of my heart. So as a result, I still stayed in the, in the same place. But that was the first time that I really understood very, very clearly that just by writing down what you need, and it, you don't have to elaborate on it, but just by bulleting, what's important to you, you can cut through the periphery. I mean, I, I could be obscene here, but I'm not going to be. The, you can just cut through everything that isn't important, and you can figure out what it is that spirit is trying to tell you. And because, like I said, I had 25 points 23 of them were spiritual, so that should have immediately clued me in as to where my heart was leading me. Um, then, uh, at, at about the same time, there was a gal that was the mother of one of my, da uh, my daughter's uh, friends, one of her friends. And um, Celestine Proph uh, Prophecy was the book that came out that, that year. And she made a comment to me. She said, I could have written that book in 10 minutes because she had been writing from the time she had also been similar to me. She had been writing for like 40 years and uh, never did anything with her writing. And so I, I looked at her and I thought about it afterwards and I said, you know, she did write that book. She did write Celestine Prophecy. The only difference between her and, and James Redfield, he publicized it. She didn't. And about the same time, I heard a comment from Spirit. I read a comment from Spirit that said, we give everybody the same, we give 200 people the identical message in the hopes that one of them will go public with it. Mm -hmm. So that, too, should have made a dent on me. But it didn't. So... But uh, anyway, she is what I called a closet writer. She, she just wrote for her own edification, but would never go public with it because she felt that she couldn't. She just wouldn't do it. Um, the other thing that, uh, welcome. The other thing that, uh, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, I think it was in the 70s, there was a wonderful um, uh, TV serial called Little House on the Prairie. Do you remember that? Laura Ingalls wrote about that about 100 years ago, somewhere in that neighborhood. And so it dawned on me that 100 years from now, every single thing that we take so for granted is not, chances are, is going to be different. So that anything that we write about today, about our, even our mundane stuff, is going to fascinate somebody because of the fact that it's going to seem so quaint to them. And 
So I thought, this is, this is interesting. So just by us telling our story, it will give people an idea of, you know, what it was, you know, what, what it was that, that we did. Um, the next thing that I, I thought to myself, too, at, at the same time, uh, in the same period, I went to the first psychic that I had ever gone to in my life on the on encouragement of my sister. And she said that uh, this gentleman was uh, in from England and that he was terrific. Some of her friends actually had gone three, four times. And so she uh, encouraged me to come to Grand Rapids, Michigan to see him. And I did. It took me a couple of years to get there because he, he was there for three years and I saw him at the tail end of the third year. And he, when, after he had his session with me, he looked at me and he said, Alice, you should be doing what I'm doing. And my reaction to him was, Barry, there is no way. At that time, this is 1994, I could not see how my interest of spiritual uh, matters could at all be um, translated into a job, into a career. And so I was very, um, uh, to me, it was, it was an impossibility. It was absolutely impossible. Then, again, fast forward, that's 1994, fast forward to 2004, and at that time I was introduced to another gal, um, because now I'm, you know, we've started the church. Juan disappointed us. We've, we've been ordained as ministers. I think 2004 was, was the year of our ordination. And um, I was introduced to a gal called Carol Fitzpatrick. And she channeled your higher self. And so, and her voice actually changed as she channeled the higher self. So when I went to her, as I'm listening to what she's saying about the different facets of my personality, I'm looking at her, and at the end, as I say goodbye to her, I look her straight in the eye and I said, am I going to be doing what you're doing? And she said, yes. And I believed her. So I was able to then get the germ of the idea that I can do this that I can do something with my, with what I'm learning that can actually bring me an income. But still, I didn't act on it. So, uh, but the, uh, the next thing was that I started to look at language and I started to notice, this was one of my speeches in the uh, very early years because we've been giving speeches probably since 2004, because as soon as Wanda had the church in place, every one of us was expected to speak. And so one of the speeches that I did was on words, because words started to really fascinate me. And I noticed that the word sacred and scared are the same letters. The only thing that's different is the C is changed. And so, I, I gave a whole speech on that, how words are, um, how you can find not only a certain meaning in words, but how uh, words can, well, they can make or break your spirit. They can help you overcome tremendous uh, problems in your life. They can also cause you to um, go into a place of self-defeat. But they, um, but they're also they're they're very very clever in in uh, the way that words are out there, um, and uh, the next thing that I I knew what that was very important that was happening that had happened in my life was before my mother had passed away, she had given me her autobiography because she was able to go back to school uh, four years before she died. She had been denied from um, a higher education 
And in her case, higher education meant anything above eighth grade. So she wasn't able to attend what in Poland is called gimnazjum, uh, which is the equivalent of our high school. And she wasn't, she was too poor to, uh, uh, her mother wasn't able to uh, get the funds together for that. And uh, when she saw a woman roughly her own age, and I think she was 55, 50 at the time, um, carrying a load of books. And she asked her what she was doing. And the woman said to her, I'm in high school. And she looked at her and, and she thought, well, if she's in high school at her age and I'm her age, I can go back to high school. And so she, for the first time in her life, she started to really enjoy expressing herself on paper. And she left me with her autobiography. Um, and her, one of her dying wishes was that I get this published for her. Hopefully I'll do it. Up to this point, I haven't done it. But fortunately, I have a great helper that is my catalyst in many, many ways, and, and Aliana, and uh, so I'm presuming that, that she can also help me with that, just as, as she's helping me with Own Your Power. But the, the thing that I know my mother had a very unique story in the sense that her father left for Canada from Poland when she was seven, wrote for 10 years, and then virtually dropped out of sight. And so the mother was, and uh, her, my grandmother had to basically fend for herself and because she didn't really have the support of her family because her father was an alcoholic. So she um, has a, it's, it's a very sad story, but it's a very poignant story because my grandmother never gave up, my mother never gave up. And my mother ended up marrying the richest, the son of the wealthiest family in town. And so she, uh, well, the, in, in the village actually, so she had a, um, she had a, um, uh, unfortunately she wasn't accepted by the family because uh, of the class difference. But uh, because the war broke out uh, shortly after she married, she said she had prayed to God for something to happen, to have them accept her. And obviously she didn't, she never considered that as a possibility. But uh, then what happened was she said everybody became poor. So there was, they couldn't have the class distinction anymore because there was no such thing. The bombs didn't care where they, they dropped, you know, they, uh, the wealthy got hit just as, as badly as the poor people. So, uh, so that, that was the great equalizer. But anyway, she's written her story and I know in, in all the counseling that I've been doing and the readings that I've been doing, that absolutely every single person has a unique story to share. And that's another reason why you should write it down. The next thing that um, I just wanted to cover is what Julia Cameron in her wonderful book, The Artist's Way, she says, prime the pump. She encourages you to write three pages a day. And this is just stream of consciousness writing. This, is, this has absolutely nothing to do with trying to say anything. It's just sitting down, writing, 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 writing. And I did this the other day for the first time in, in many, many months. And uh, realized that when I channel I can actually channel 